Wilson Morales from Black Freeman TV. Hey guys, how's it going? Wilson, what's up? Going on, man? You know, you guys are here. We're here for season three. Neil, you've joined the gang. So what do we make what do we have to do to keep your character in play and not have your odds as far as when you're gonna go out? <laughs> oh wow. Um that's a better question for the writers, bro. I don't know. I uh I I I feel like I did I feel like I did a damn good job if I do say so myself. I was proud of myself, you know, when when I when, when I started portraying this role because I, I I jumped into it because of the challenge of it. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a role I've never played before. Uh, uh, you know, I'm doing I'm doing I'm trying new things. I'm doing things I've never done before within this show, and uh, it, it feels good. You know, it feels good to to branch out. You know, and, and take this acting thing serious and. and uh, really prove that I deserve to be there as opposed to just all right here come the R and B dude trying to do some acting. Let's 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 watch him crash and burn. You know what I'm saying? Um so I, I have to give a shout out to 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 Meech and, and to everybody over there for embracing me with open arms. And uh yeah man, it was it was a blast. It was an absolute blast. I, I love this character and uh, I I hope the world does too. We'll see what happens. Well little Meech, you know I've watched you grow on this show as I continue to watch Big Meech, who you're playing, his swagger and character just has no bounds, no limits. How are, are you like that as well in, in real life? Because you seem to be growing with this character, and, and I don't think he has any fear in him. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that's that's definitely how I am. You know, I got it from my pops. You know, and, and my pops, he was definitely a fearless, courageous young man. To even um, do what he's done, you know, you have to be fearless, you know, and the things, the decisions that he made at such a young age, even living in a poverty-stricken neighborhood, you know, growing up but not a lot of things in front of you, he still made history and made it possible for the people around him to have financial freedom as well as him. You know, when you when you get a lot of a lot of rich guys, a lot of people with money, you don't really see good intentions and them trying to take care of everybody. My father has always wanted to take care of everybody around him ever since he was a kid. Even when he was growing up and just started to make money, you know, he wanted everybody to be doing the same thing, you know, and that's what makes him different, you know, than a lot of other people in the world. He, he cares about people, you know, as well as himself, but he cares about people. From what we see, from what I've seen so far, <clears throat> You know, there's like this love-hate relationship early on between Rodney and Meech. You know, can you tell me a little bit about that start, how you guys got along and playing out those scenes? Neil? Uh, well, again, you know, uh, uh, Meech especially, uh, like I said, they embraced me with open arms, man. They they, they 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 knew that I was coming in as as the new guy, but they didn't treat me like the new guy. You know what I'm saying? As far as, far as I'm concerned, I, I felt like I've been there all three uh, – for the first two seasons, like it was that much love on set, and then uh, you know, and then again, just just kind of taking me under wing and showing me the ropes of, of uh, how things go on this particular set. You know, it's always different. You know, whatever whatever set you on, who to look out for, what to do here, what to do there, how to move, and all of that. And, and Meech was was an integral part of making sure that I knew uh, that I knew to do what I was supposed to do. Um, again, man, I had a, I had a ball with this. I really did. Um, I I, I don't want to give. Nothing away, just in regard to to Meech and, and Greeny's relationship. But uh, I, I will say that there is there is a, a dynamic there, and uh, I hope that the show continues with it. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Let me, you know, from the different directors and writers you've worked with, how have you grown as an actor as you continue to play this role? Um, I have grown so much as an actor from the first season, just because. First season, I got to work with Will Harris and a lot of other people, you know, who's been acting all all my life, and I got to learn so much from each and every one of them, you know, even my castmates, you know, down to Da Vinci. I got to learn from everybody, you know. So the whole experience just has, has been amazing. You know, first and second season, it was still surreal to me. It was still me overcoming the butterflies and the nerves. You know, now I know I'm supposed to be an actor. You know, now I'm comfortable. And, 
you know, just trying to have the best product now, you know, and everybody on set, everybody is like a family. We're all close. We all, you know, give each other our opinions and inputs, you know, and on anything we need help with. And we all come together as a collective group and, you know, make magic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously, you know, you, you go back and forth between your day job and this job right here. You know, is there going to yeah. be a period of time where you take a whole year off and do a bunch of acting where we're like, oh, I already take you seriously because I've been following you as an actor for over a decade. So you've been putting <laughs> in your work, you know, so. Appreciate that, uh, brother. Appreciate it. So obviously, you know, you're not new to me, you know, to some other people, but you're not new to me. That's love. I, I, I'll say this. I, I my, my love for acting has not yet reached my love for music. You know what I'm saying? Music is woven into my DNA. Like that's that's just a part of who I am. But I'm definitely developing a love for the acting thing. I, I love the concept of just stepping outside of yourself or, or seeing how convincing you can be stepping outside of yourself. Like I said, when I walked into this, I said, I don't want people to, to see Neo trying to play a role. I want people to really see Greeny. I want people to really see somebody other than Neo. And uh, just the challenge of, of trying to do that, trying to keep up with the other actors on set, you know, because everybody is a professional, everybody is doing their thing. And uh, uh, again, I, I didn't want to come in and look like, you know, the dude that was done a favor. Like I wanted to look like I was supposed to be there, you know, so I did the research and uh, went in there and gave him everything. And, and uh, I feel like I, I feel like I could pat myself on the back after afterwards because I felt like I did a pretty good job. But, you know, that's 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 me. I, I want people to see it and, and to see what they think. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure speaking to you guys. Obviously, it's good to have a season three. People are looking forward to see where these cats go. We already know, you know, where the main characters are going to go. But to everybody else, it's always good to see new faces, familiar faces. Keep doing your thing. We're always here to support. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Have a good day. Thank you, bro. Wilson Morales from Black Family TV. Hey, how's it, how's it going? Wilson, I'm so happy to meet you. Yes. <laughs> So here you are. Obviously, you've been part of this franchise for a minute, but this is the first episode, first time you're writing episode one. Yeah. You know, so how much pressure is that knowing you're leading off season three? You know, it's just an honor to be the showrunner of the show. You know, Randy Huggins is from Detroit. He created it, was the showrunner the first two seasons, brought me in to be his right hand. And he had a health complication. So Detroit versus everybody is, uh, is our... Uh, love to him mm -hmm. and then you know when you have a lot of actors on this show some stay in some they don't some get introduced you know as a writer you know you have to find a way to weave them in so that they don't look like props while still paying attention to the core characters yes yeah so we had a lot of fun introducing a lot of new faces because with meech in atlanta there's a whole new crew and there's new enemies also out there. So we always try to make things feel as organic as possible. As long as our heroes driving things, that's how we're able to kind of interweave everything. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you have, you know, obviously some familiar faces like Neo and Ren and so forth, what goes into bringing them on uh, and giving them the work so that way they can be seen as actors and not just like, oh, they're just now bringing in, you know, anybody. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's playing people and characters that are not who they are in real life. You know, what you saw with Neo is totally different, you know, than than the artist that he is. Um, and then with Sweetie, you know, totally different vibe than what. And I, I don't think you got to see that episode, but so it's get, letting people having the creative freedom to play something different that's not them and push themselves in a new direction. Mm -hmm. Now, is it already mapped out as far as how long you think it can go? Because we're obviously there's a lot um, that people know that we didn't get to that part yet. We didn't get to that part yet. Yes. But it's coming, especially now that they're in different cities. Yeah. And I mean, the, the guys had a 22 year run, you know, so we have plenty of material to tell. And we're going to keep telling it as long as stars keeps letting us, you know, and we always have to figure out, okay, how do we condense things? How do we take that iconic moment and put it in and make it our own also? Mm -hmm. And then you say, you know, I was talking to some of the actors and I go, you know, none of these characters are goody two-shoes. Everybody's flawed in one way or the other, you yeah. know, but there's got to be somebody out there, maybe Nikki so far, <laughs> you know, who's clean, <laughs> you know, but everybody else is like, wait for it, wait for it. You know, as, as seasons go on, 
people's personalities change, you know, and, and that's the question is, is that the same as it was in real life? Or this is something that, you know, we're doing for, you know, for a uh, uh, TV. <laughs> well, we're always, we always want to dramatize, but we're always evolving. Right. And the theme in our writer's room is reinvention for season three. So you're going to see all the characters reinventing themselves and it's not always easy to do that, you know, to, to get what you want, to be seen how you want to be seen. People will be making moves in the re to reinvent themselves, you know, to achieve their goals. Because every character has their own arc and goal that they're trying to achieve. But, and you may not like the way they get to it. Um, but there's going to be lots of surprises when it comes to that. <clears throat> and very last question. How have you evolved on being on a show so far as a writer, as a showrunner? Yeah. Um, show running, I think, is like having kids. You really don't know uh, till you get into the spot. And I've been in the business 24 years. This is the job that I've always wanted to do. And every day you're faced with um, something different that has nothing to do with writing. That's the thing is you get, I've always wanted to, I wanted to be a writer since I was 15. You become a writer and then show running takes you away from the writing. <laughs> so that's how you have to, you got to learn to just um, manage and juggle a lot of things um, and really protect the things that you love too. Well, you know how to adapt and adapt well. So congrats. You know, obviously we're looking forward to see where the season takes us. And I'll thank be watching you. like everybody else. Okay. Take thank care. you. So great to meet you. Thanks. Same. <laughs> well, some from Black from TV. Hello, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> great. How are you today? Good. You know, the thing about having the last name is Flannery is like, you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Vegas line stays stat. It's like, they're not dying. They still live. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be changes, though. You know, right. there'll be changes that are coming up here. Season three. What are we expecting from Mom Dukes? <laughs> Oh, you got a whole lot to see from, from Mom Dukes this season. Um, she is finding herself this season and um, and empowering herself and learning to give herself permission and taking time for herself. Like she's used to, you know, being there for everyone else. And now it's like, hey, let me find some, some me time here. And... Um, you know, she dips and dabbles into quite a few things. Mm -hmm. There you go, Layla. You know, obviously, you're growing up before our eyes. You know, we see Nicole growing up. You know, we see Nicole, Nicole grow up more than we expect in season three. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> some may say yes. Some may say yes. But Nicole is a teenager now. I think that um, the sort of, I think that she's really just, I mean, we were just talking about the parallels between Nicole and, um, and Mama in that, you know, they're just stepping out and they're individualizing themselves they're seeing what their likes and dislikes are i always like to say that um nicole's sort of plot line is like a, a coming of age story in a crime drama so it's really mm -hmm. you know i think it's going to be great for the viewers to sort of see um the mistakes that she makes but also the the decisions that she makes for herself you know for better or for worse because she's growing up you say stepping out i say rebellious <laughs> you know <laughs> They, they're rebel. Even Mom Dukes, you know, she's rebelling as well. You know, she's she's reinventing herself. You know, you That's can say, right. you know, what, so what, what teenager, you know, doesn't doesn't rebel every now and then, you know, and that's the excuse. That's the easiest excuse. She's a teenager. You're expecting <laughs> that. You know, they're all going to change. They all grew up at some point. So do their minds, you know. But with you, Nicole, obviously, you know, you, you, we always see this character that you're playing as the goody two shoes, you know, like everybody else in this show. Is flawed. I said this earlier, except for Nicole, so far, <laughs> you know, the, so far, you know, but with, right. uh, but with you, you know, is she a goody two shoes? You know, do we expect her to be consistent throughout or is she going to change? I mean, everybody got to change, right? You know, she, she, she evolves a lot this season and, um, and she's in this new discovery mode and giving herself permission to um, do different things. And she's 
challenge, you know, with just trying to find herself and deciding, you know, which way should I go? Should I do this? Should I, you know, um, there are lots of things, but yeah, I do think you will see more of her, um, flaws and, but I still think that you'll have a lot of compassion for Lucille. You know, we're excited to see season three to see where these characters are going to go. Obviously we know, you know, you'll still continue on. So, I'll wait to see the rest of these episodes. In the meantime, congrats on coming back again. Take Thank care. you so much. You too. Thank you so much. Wilson Morales from Black Freeman TV. Hello, folks. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> I, you know, from what I've seen so far, I'm getting a little Cagney and Lacey vibes out here. <laughs> <laughs> totally. You know, on State Patrol, and I can't recall the last time we saw two female cops in the car on a stakeout. <laughs> So Morgan, I'm going to go to you, Morgan. You know, obviously you're not entering this world. How did Kelly make you feel comfortable? <laughs> oh my gosh, she was amazing. She was such a great partner, but just a great person in general. Um, off camera, we just cracked up the whole entire time, had like such a great time. And she also just was such a powerful person to just give me little tidbits and little things that, you know, because I'm coming into this world and uh, she did About an amazing job. Yes. If it's about your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and how I need to be warm and how, yes, all the things. So, so, so she, you was, tell she was so amazing. You, go ahead. You know, uh, obviously for you, Kelly, you know, you seem to beat the Vegas odds. You're still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in you Vegas know. now. That's so funny that you say we, that. We always say when you're in this, when you're in this world, if you're not a family member, you know, the odds okay. are which episode do they go out in? But right. you're still here, you know, what makes Jen available and not expendable? <laughs> right. I, you know, I worried about that whole second and third season. Let me tell you, every time there was another script, I was like, is she still around? Is she still around? Because, <laughs> you know, you fall in love with characters on BMF and then poof, they're gone. And you're like, what? What just happened? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so far Jin's doing pretty well. I think um, you know she's she's got such a great storyline. I there's such a, a a wonderful background and and you know she's so flawed and 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 so uh, likable and and I really feel that uh, that you know this this family this BMF family it's tight it's a really tight family. But like once you've broken in, you're in. <laughs> now you use the word flawed and I and I think about Morgan's character and I go okay you know is she a goody two shoes because every cop on that show is flawed you know what I'm saying and the question is at what point do we see it are we going to see it from your character Morgan absolutely yes she has many layers and many sides to her and I think that's what makes her character so yummy you know, that that's what made me so excited to be able to take on this role is the fact that she is so layered and she's not, you know, what you get is what you see type of thing. So it's coming. I don't want to say when, but definitely it's coming. You you will see that. <laughs> and so far, obviously, when, when you do a show like this, um, you know, Kelly's now been on it now. And so like, OK, you know, you never know. It, it's it's a world where there's a revolving door is out there. Uh, but some people stick around, you know. And for you, Kelly, obviously, you just talked about, you know, what keeps Jen alive, what makes her, you know, stay alive out there. Uh, what have you appreciated so far from being on the show? Uh, you know, I think this 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 character is like willing to do whatever it, it takes to get the job done. And um, and I feel like, you know me as an actress has to sort of be in that same mindset, you know, cause it's challenging. It's a very challenging business. And, uh, you know, working through the strike was very difficult and crazy sometimes. And, um, you know, we had to really rely on each other to, to get through it when we didn't have the writers around to help us and racing against the, the, the actor's strike, you know, that was pending to get the job done, but we did it. We, yeah. we bonded together and we worked hard and we dug our heels in and we did it. Mm -hmm. And before I let you go, Morgan, did you have to play catch up on the show or were you already a fan and watched the episodes coming in? Oh, I was already a fan. Yes. <laughs> like, I know, I know this story really well. One, 
I saw the documentary randomly. My mom told me I should watch this documentary, watch the documentary, fell in love with the story, then found out they had a show. So I watched the show and just to be able to be a part of it is like dream come true. It's unreal, honestly. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing about this show. It's like, you know, you, it, it, there's so much fun in there. There's a lot of characters and that's, you know, they give work to a lot of people. A lot of people get discovered for those who haven't seen your work elsewhere. You know, so congrats on the rose. Congrats, you know, on still being alive. Obviously, we'll put your name on the board. <laughs> you know, see, does she make it out? Episode seven, episode eight, you know, because we got to give some time for us to know your character, for us to feel emotionally involved. Otherwise, you go out early, you're like, you know she was gone. But once you get us in there, we like you. You're like, really? Wow. <laughs> Well, let's see where it goes. Congrats. We'll talk down the road. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.